I have really been blown away by meeting a community of people who believe in the Qur'an and love the Qur'an, even though they've never heard it. So what I want to do is I want to ramp up the YouTube channel and the podcast again, inshallah, by going over five very, very important things for us to discuss. Number one, why I haven't made any content in a few months. There must be a good reason to keep, uh, to keep Sam away from Arabic with Sam. Number two, I want to talk to you guys about my run for our deaf charity. Um, I'm doing a run on the 1st of September, inshallah, here in London. Why am I in London? That's something we'll get to, inshallah. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Arabic Unlocked and whether they've sacked me for being useless or not, and a potential revival of the Arabic in 60 Steps program. And then lastly, a free eight-week series, which I'll be doing here on the Arabic with Sam YouTube channel and podcast. So, as many of you know, I'm a person who came to Islam largely through listening to the melody of the Qur'an. That's really what kind of softened my heart to Islam. And so when I met my wife, who is um, a hard of hearing person, I mean, in as much as that sign language is her main language, and she mostly associates with the deaf community, you know, de uh, like deaf people are her main friends and her main community. I have really been blown away by meeting a community of people who believe in the Qur'an and love the Qur'an, even though they've never heard it. So in Somalia, my wife and I, mainly my wife, I'm a miskeen, you know, trustee who's sort of in service to the project. I'm not the founder or anything. We have a charity in Somalia. We have a school with 50 children uh, in our school now, although we have another 100 children on our waiting list. And that's a big part of why I'm doing this run, inshallah, so we can take more students. And, you know, we also take on lots of community cases whereby we can use the skills that we have in Somali sign language, as well as our connections with public services and things like that in Mogadishu, to make things like legal action and justice, as well as medical care, as well as education accessible to the deaf community. So we're working really hard in that project. So that, that's kind of what I've been really busy on in the past few months, and that's why I haven't been here, creating the content that I would like to uh, for the Arabic language students of the world. So that brings us on to point number two. As I'm here in London, one of the main reasons that I'm here over the summer is to do this run, to raise some money, inshallah, for our deaf school and for our deaf charity in Somalia. So um, I'll put the Just Giving link in the description below or in the show notes if you're listening on the podcast. Um, and I would like to raise £10,000 by doing a 10k run. Um, if you go over to the Sam of Somalia Instagram, you'll be able to follow a little bit about my training. Every time I'm on runs and doing training, I, I check in to show you how how worrying it is, how unfit I am. <laughs> and uh, you can see how the plot thickens uh, in the Instagram stories over there. So and that's something that we're doing, inshallah. I'd really, really appreciate if any of you can give one pound, two pounds, or lots of pounds, um, you know, to support that, inshallah. I believe at the moment we're at about 600 pounds, um, but I'm trying to get to 10,000, inshallah. So, um, yeah, so those are the first two things. Number three, have Arabic Unlocked sacked me? No, they haven't. Yeah, some people have noticed that I'm in the content less and I'm not doing their TikTok channel anymore. So have they sacked me for being utterly useless? Uh, no, they haven't sacked me uh, for that reason. Um, but I am doing less with Arabic Unlocked at the moment. It's absolutely nothing against them. Wallahi, I love those. I love those brothers for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I believe that we've done really, really good work in the academy. I'm so proud of lots of the things that we've done. And I'm currently still teaching an intensive program. Um, for Arabic Unlocked as well. So no, but I am sort of less involved at the moment. Not that that couldn't change. I mean, it's quite possible that at the moment I'm less involved in the future, I become more involved. Um, it's, it's nothing to do with that, really. It's just some circumstantial things that mean that um, it's not kind of my, my main thing currently. Which brings us on to point number four, inshallah. A potential, potential revival, a potential ihya of there's a potential for a revival of the Arabic in 60 Steps program. In this section, I'm going to say some home truths about um, the Arabic language education industry, and I'll probably ruffle some feathers. So I've been teaching Arabic now for about 10 years, I'd say. Um, in, in some capacity or another, I mean, I was still at university 10 years ago. But I was teaching still, like students who are further, who are behind me in their Arabic language journey. And I would say in that time, I've learned about some things that work and some that don't. And I've come across lots of successful Arabic students and those who have not been successful. And if, inshallah, we do revive the Arabic in 60 Steps program, all of those lessons will be implemented, even at great cost financially to myself, if needs be. Um, because there's some things that, frankly, we're doing that I'm not sure I agree with anymore. First and foremost, big pre-recorded courses. There's amazing value in lots of these courses. The Arabic in 60 Steps program, for example, has a content, is a condensed version of an entire Arabic language degree. 
like there are things that we cover in steps 51 through 60 that are fourth year Arabic language degree texts, right? So there's, there's an immense amount of content and value in there. But the fact is, is nobody's doing them. Like the fact is like lots of, lots of pre-recorded courses, the completion rate is like five, 10, 15%. Do you know what I mean? And I, I'm not sure that's the thing that we should aspire for. Like they're brilliant business-wise and they're full of value. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that in itself, right? Um, it's similar to, a, to the business model of a gym, I suppose. Like if you go to a gym, most people hardly ever use the gym. Like most members who pay, you know, 30 pounds a month, they, they go once a year or they never go. They just don't want to cancel their membership because then they'd be accepting that they're not going to go to the gym. But the people who do go to the gym, they get thousands of pounds worth of value, right? But it's just that the bill is being fit by other people. And sometimes pre-recorded courses are like that. So what I would like to do in a revival situation of the Arabic in 60 Steps program would be to actually teach it in cohorts of eight week programs. Now, eight weeks is very specific because, I mean, I've taught about 10 intensive programs now from between sort of 10 to 12, even, even a bit longer than that weeks. And I find that seven to eight weeks is about the sweet spot. And I've found some evidence, some research. I'm to actually back that up since realizing that. But at about week seven, week eight, students start to flag at that point. So I think that is a real sweet spot where a significant amount of Arabic can be learned. But it's not an amount, but, but it's not too long, right? The novelty hasn't worn off at that level. And um, I also want to normalize learning the Arabic language in waves. You know, like a student could do a, an eight week course with me, which is the whole of module one, and then not do module two for a few weeks. And then the next time we run module two, they can join for module two. Because when you get access to a program and you're expected to sort of do it at your own pace, what happens if you do stop studying or you do take a break, which everybody will and does and should. And even in my journey learning the Arabic language, all people who have taken breaks from learning Arabic, for example, at university level, when they have the summer holiday, then come back, they all report speaking better Arabic when they come back after their break, right? But when people take a break, when they just have access to a, a lot, one long program, is they don't call it a break. They say, I've fallen off my studies. I'm not consistent, right? Whereas I'd rather normalize the language of completing whole of module one and have a tangible goal around module one. Take a break and then do module two and normalize this idea of learning in waves. So, Inshallah, if we do that, I'd like to do it taught. So anybody who is interested in perhaps joining the Arabic in 60 Steps program to be taught it by me personally for an eight week cohort from the 14th of September until the 3rd of November, please do let me know, Inshallah. You can email me, sam at arabic in 60 stepscom or just comment underneath this video, Inshallah, if you're watching on YouTube. And then the last thing, for those of you who may not want to be involved in a bigger program, but you like the YouTube channel and you like the podcast, I'm going to be starting an eight-week free series on the short surahs of the Qur'an. So we're going to do Surah Al-Fatiha from an Arabic language perspective, the four Quls, so that's five. We're going to do other short surahs, including Surah Al-Asr, uh, Surah Al-Kawthar, and Surah Al-Nasr. We're going to go through those eight uh, very short surahs, one video for each of them, because let's face it, these are the short surahs that many of us do in our salah. They're some of the first surahs that we teach our children that they'll be doing in their salah. So I'd like to put together some really high quality uh, video breakdowns of these surahs from an Arabic language perspective. And I'm also going to have made some free flashcards for you guys as well for those surahs. So if you want to practice the vocab for those surahs, then uh, you'll have printable flashcards that are beautifully made up and designed that I want to give you guys absolutely for free, as well as a compliment to that free series that we're going to be doing here on the YouTube channel and on the podcast. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it or listening for those of you guys on the podcast. And um, inshallah, next week we'll be out with our first episode of our Quranic uh, short surahs series. We'll start with Surah Al-Fatiha. So I'll see you all then. Assalamu alaikum.